Hello and welcome to Game Club and today Wonga Mania, the game of, well, economics, with Detzilla here chasing you and trying to destroy your economy before, well, either socialists or capitalists do. Join us as we play and review. I'm going to start the unboxing. Um, okay, firstly, box, nice cover. Very, I mean, this is kind of very anime. I think that it will attract a certain type of audience. And, and in fact, in some respects, it probably will avoid attracting certain stuffy members of the uh, economics crowd who probably would benefit from playing this game. I'm just trying to get it open. Oh, a little shuffle, there we go. Right, and inside we've got our setting up the game. Good instructions there. Uh, nicely laid it out. Um, quite detailed which looks good and then on the back yeah we've got no well like the capital gain studio we've got no uh, playthrough video I can see but there probably is one somewhere and then of course we've got the cycles and economic lesson from Wonga Mania very good they let us know all about economics which is always useful we've got our um, basically our economic uh, wheel which shows the recession recovery stagnation and of course growth we don't want a recession uh, we've got our cards here and in fact we've got fun facts on there our dice and our character to denote what part of the economy we're at uh, insurance cards and we've got our trust fund cards and then we've got a bunch of other cards here which are the playing cards anyway join us as we will then now play and then review Wonga Mania Okay, so what I've done is I've set up uh, Wonga Mania in front of me. This is a two-player game that we're playing. Uh, obviously, it says 10 and up, two to five players in about 30 to 60 minutes. I'm just going to run through one round because it's not that complex, but the first time you play it, you just probably need to flesh it out a bit. But the card setups normally, you, I keep my fun facts here. That, that effectively you don't really need, but on the back, you've got your scorecard, so it's worthwhile keeping for end of game scoring i just keep it above the board here trust funds insurance your market cards and then you have your four market here now each player has been given their four cards plus their three wonga notes now they're not allowed to turn these over because this is obviously their cash and they use that to buy stuff and same again for the second player which is here and obviously he has four as well we have our dinosaur which is basically the uh the um Detzilla as such and I rolled a single banana sorry I, I moved them so I've now moved them to the second wheel because every time you roll whatever you get two bananas for instance you then move them forward one and that is how you open that's the game ready to go what you do first is you do your payday so effectively and I've just got the booklet here and I'll run through so that I get it exactly right this is this is has outlined the setup and then it has the phase one phase two and that's pretty much it for the game which is quite useful but the first phase is the payday so what you do is you look at your uh, open cards here and these are considered in your pool these are considered active cards and you've got your so for instance i've got the earn is what we're looking at here is earn one now we do get a salary which is uh, two but i'll come to that in a second uh, that is a playable card this is earn income so that for instance will be two from the board and obviously swap one asset in play with another player's asset in play if I want to use that, but I don't want to use that. And so what effectively I've got here is I've got one plus two and plus another two, which means I've got five. So I go one, two, three, four, and five. So that is mine. Now, just to note, you can, when you're first playing, when you're first setting up, you take your four cards, you can repeatedly try and um, choose a different card if you wish. And I've done intentionally on this guy's um, hand to show you he has none of these, uh, none of the cards to gain anything so he's only going to gain his two so effectively he's got critical uh critical illness accident inflation and banker he's got no uh cards for uh gaining of assets gaining of uh, money so he only takes two as salary which will then go we'll slot underneath here then we go to the take action phase so once that phase is over with um we then flip over to the take action phase. Now just to note the important notes it's got here, the income is the same for both stock and property for the basic board. The income is different for stock and property for the advanced board and you need to refer to. So the advanced board deals with the outer ring, 
and also the inside the inner ring as well so there's two there's two separate uh, elements here so as you can see here in fact actually I've just noticed it, it should be uh, three so I should take another one for that as well um, but it's so effectively you've got here your inner ring and then your outer ring and each one will will tell you and as you can as it says quite clearly here that is the income is the same for um, your uh, stocks as well as for your property okay i just realized actually i shouldn't take that apologies i'm messing things up as always so then the next phase phase two is phase two uh basically you can choose to take any action a player can take the same action up to three times so effectively you can either draw a card from the bank uh, exchange an opportunity card which are these cards here these are called opportunity cards uh, play an opportunity card and that effectively means you have to look at the value here and play it so if it's a zero obviously you can play that without any penalization but if it's a one obviously you have to pay one for it and same with this guy he's got a two a one a one and a zero um, you can sell an asset if you wish and that effectively just means that you can dispose of this for the value here and gain that as profit or, or loss depending on what you've got on it uh, you can buy insurance which will protect against and as you see here insurance it costs one cancel the effects of one umbrella card and that effectively saves you from certain death or certain loss so for instance an umbrella card would be a card like this one here and as you can see it's got the umbrella card there um, and then finally you can buy a trust fund now the objective of the game actually is to buy as much as many trust funds as possible usually I've seen uh, some people put this as four trust funds some people put this as six trust funds they cost eight they're just a note they do cost eight so they're quite quite heavy toll on the pocket but if you're going for four of them then it can be quite an interesting game if you go for three which is what most people do it's less uh, difficult to be fair um, you can go bankrupt in the game and if you do go bankrupt if you basically don't have enough w to cover your losses uh you basically discard all of the cards in your hand remove all cards in play that you have um that includes obviously your insurance etc with the exemption of the trust fund and or baby card um start the next round as per normal by collecting two as a salary and draw two from the market so that's that's it now the special cards just to note are the baby card it forces a player to nurture to nurture the baby for one uh, wonga over the course of three rounds which can be a real draw the divorce card obviously uh, is a bit of a stinker because it makes you lose cards and then you've got obviously your entrepreneur politician convertible bond and growth in stock card now to note there are game variants and i will go through it on the review but you've got your the apprentice family fund you've got the strategist and then you've got the hardcore wonga maniac but bar that i would also point out the quick start rules which we've kind of gone over that is the game that is it it's as simple as that it's pretty much you then well every round you will move forward roll move forward off you go uh it's it's literally like that it's as simple as that and probably one thing i haven't uh, sorry one thing i haven't noticed so you don't roll sorry i haven't noted that you have to the first player the last player so it chooses where on the board to start and the first player rolls the dice so that's that's that um, and the yeah so the productivity dice um, first player move the economic token backwards and the number indicators on the die so depending on you always go clockwise um, but you don't roll the economic uh, the, the die um, because to be fair you don't really need to after that point and there you go you do have sometimes players that will force you or cards that will force you to roll but that's another story and that's it as a down the hills economist when i saw wonga mania floating around i got quite excited uh, it seemed to me that it was a game that was able to kind of encapsulate uh, economics and is by a person who actually is a very well respected economist and someone who has some level of knowledge within the industry and field which means that when they're playing a game and when they're putting it together and when they're sort of critiquing the subject they're doing it in a way that one as an economist you find interesting but two is also you begin to uh, evaluate things in a, in a kind of weighted way that said the game itself has uh, a few tickling issues 
and one major sort of flaw. The tickling issues are that it's very much designed to sort of fit into a studenty sort of environment. It, it looks, it feels very much like a kind of um, tongue-in-cheek game which would appeal to economic students. No problem with that at all. I do sometimes feel that um, th that sort of sort of deflates the, the power of what's being said because it, there is a lot of very pertinent information being pumped across and some of it is very interesting especially for either novice or starter economists but it does devalue it in a way that I, I, I couldn't every time I played it I couldn't sort of escape from but it might be just me being a bit of an ass to be perfectly fair with you the big flaw with it is that the game really doesn't penalise you if you become bankrupt. So effectively what happens is you still keep your trust funds and you will find that there are people who will just literally bowl along to get as much Wonga as possible, that's the cash, in order just to buy trust funds, get the three trust funds that they've won the game. And it doesn't seem logical or fair. That is the big, big bugbear I have and the one bit of it that I was kind of like, disenfranchised with because the, the, if you look at games like I'm, I'm going to bring up the classic Monopoly but other business games for instance we, we reviewed many ages ago Motley Fool's game they all were sort of pivoted on the fact that to become bankrupt actually is is kind of disastrous and if you do that if you don't have a level of financial acumen or even a level of financial patience you can end up being completely obliterated by the money monster and I think that what Wonga Mania does is it tries to look at the kind of laissez-faire type economy, economics and, and that kind of uh, liberal sort of uh, cash flow where there is literally just computed numbers where there's no real physical sort of quantity, quantitative um, money value that, that it kind of loses its edge but I actually, I actually think that somewhere along the line there's a sort of satirical dig there it's just that does it work for the game it would be my sort of question anyway that's Wonga Mania I'm Simon and this is Game Club and um, yeah you better run from the uh, debt monster Roar!